Hello and welcome to episode 100 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 20th, 2021. Now I'm aware that I do not have 100 English episodes out yet, but it's 100 episodes ago that I started podcasting. And actually the number of videos that I've made is probably more than 200 because I record every episode twice, once in English and once in German. And on my German channel, I have additional tutorial videos and unboxing videos. Um, so, but still, episode 100 is uh, quite a milestone and I'm really happy that I've managed to do that. And I was thinking about doing something special for this 100th episode. And I decided to um, do a little video about my shop. On my German channel, I've had uh, several questions from people asking to see the inside of my shop, more than just the background that you see here. And I was always a bit reluctant to do that, but I thought for episode 100, that might be an idea. So I did a little video and in the German episode, I'm putting it at the end of the episode 100, but I also plan on doing, on placing it on the German channel itself, um, sort of like a um, who am I video that's right on top uh, on the channel. So if you are interested in seeing the inside of my shop, you can hop over to the German channel. It's linked underneath the video and you can have a look at um, what I'm showing. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying, <laughs> uh, I just basically show the different yarns that I have in my shop and um, my table and my sofa. It's not more than that, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so much about this being episode 100. Uh, and then on to what I'm wearing. I am wearing this nice little top out of a pure cotton. It's, um, yeah, a very simple thing. I used a pattern, or I started off with a pattern that I wanted to knit, but then I changed changed so many things that my um, colleague always burst out laughing when I said, well, it's Basically, uh, I knit this pattern, but then I changed this and that and so on. And uh, basically, I think the only thing I actually used from the pattern was the number of stitches for the front and back. But that pattern had, um, you knit the front and back separately and you sewed them together. And one side had like a round neck and the back had, um, I think it only had like some, some, some straps and not real back at all, and I didn't like it. So um, I, my first idea was just to do the round neck on both sides, but then when I got to the front, I, I thought, well, I, I like this V-neck, and then I ended up doing the V-neck on both sides. So basically, oops. Yeah, I can wear the top either way around. And I just realized I started with the top. I usually start with the accessory doesn't matter you can we can change things up so this is the top and it's really old and I don't have a Ravelry page for it because I knit it at a time when I wasn't into Ravelry that much yet and uh, I do remember that I had one ball of each of the colors and uh, I wasn't sure whether four balls of yarn would be enough for a top so I decided to use the white as well and um, and then I came up with this stripe sequence of doing one row of white and two row of each of the colors and then just repeat the colors. And then I actually had yarn left over. So I used the, con the, the different blues for the edgings. And I used two or three colors on the bottom edge. And I just crocheted around the edges. And I really like this. And it's, it's a perfect top for warm weather like this. I'm dressed, but it's it's light and it's cotton. And uh, ever since I finished it, I wanted to knit more of those. And now I could use the Catania. It's basically the same kind of cotton. Um, and originally my plan was to have one top in, in like every color I like. Um, so maybe this year would be a good idea to, to do one, another of these tops and then I can do a Ravelry page. And maybe I can put a picture of this one as well to say that this was, um, where I got the idea. And I might write a little pattern just if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, so much for the top I'm wearing. And the shawl I'm wearing, I guess, 
all of you who've watched the video for longer will remember. It's the virus crochet um, shawl and it's a um, it's one of those yarn balls where you have the, the color change within the yarn. Um, I got this yarn ball as a gift and I thought that'd be a good idea to finally try this pattern that I'd seen before but I had never tried. And I really like the shawl and I think with the different kind of blue colors it goes well with this top. And that's what I picked for today. And I think this is a pure cotton as well. Most of the yarn um, that I know with these color gradients are half cotton, half acrylic, but this is a pure cotton yarn, so that's another thing I like about it. Yeah, so much for what I'm wearing. Then on to finished objects. I have one finished object this week and I did not start anything new. So that's quite good to get the number of projects down a little. Um, but of course I've, I have several projects already planned. Um, yeah, but I'm also planning on finishing stuff. So uh, I will try and keep the number of projects manageable. Now, my finished object for today is the optic cushion or optic pillow case that I knit. The pattern is based on the optic blanket that I'm knitting at the moment. And again, this um, I knit these little squares to film a tutorial on how to sew them together. So basically with the optic blanket, you're not supposed to sew anything. You're supposed to knit all the squares onto each other and that's what you can do. But if you do a whole blanket in that style and if you want a big blanket, you have a lot of stuff on your lap while you're knitting and you have to like rotate the whole blanket the whole time because while you're knitting your stitches you need to turn your project so you can get to the next stitches and I felt it was quite cumbersome to do so so with my blanket I decided to do squares that consisted of nine smaller squares and then do six of those and sew them together I'll show the ones that I have done so far later on but for this um, pillow cover I decided to do four squares and two of them were knit together so that I had um, I could see what it looks like when you knit them together and then I tried to come up with different ways of sewing um, the pieces together that sort of looks alike one way I showed looks differently but then again I thought if you have um, just a few lines in your blanket where you sew it doesn't matter if it looks a bit different as long as all the seams look alike um, that would make it a nice blanket too so um, yeah but then I unpicked the um, things that I showed on the tutorial video and I um, chose one of the three ways of sewing the pieces together and I used the same method for all three seams and then I picked up the stitches around and I knit the back side in one big square. Um, but it doesn't have to be the back, this could be the front as well, depending on how I feel or where I put the, the cushion, I can use it like this or like that. I really like the fact um, that both sides are nice, it doesn't matter how I put the cushion uh, where I put it. And I changed the main color, so here the main color was white so that I could so show the seams nicely on the video and then I decided to use the blue as the main color on this side and then when I put the pillow in it was quite round it almost looked like a oddly shaped ball and that's why I sewed the middle together I just used the the um, my um, end from knitting and I just um, sewed the middle down a little bit and I think it looks quite nice I like the effect that I'm getting. I haven't washed it yet. That's uh, what I'm going to do next. I'll just throw it into the washing machine um, and wash it. And then as soon as it's dry, I can use it. Have a nice pillow. That will go with my blanket once the blanket is done. Okay, I'll have to get rid of that. It's getting really warm. Okay, that was all the finished objects I have for today. Then on to works in progress. And as usual, I'll start with the socks. I continued knitting on the Sweet Rose socks. These are the second pair of Sweet Rose socks that I'm knitting. They were the pattern for the Sock Madness round five. And I started off with this green, the black dragon 
um, series by Opal, and I was worried that for the competition, the pattern wouldn't show enough. So I stopped knitting them, knitted the other pair that I did for the competition, and then but then I picked this up again and I continued knitting. And I have finished, I knit the same heel that's in the pattern, it's the sweet tomato heel, I think it's called, by Cat Body. And then I did a bit, I changed the pattern up a little bit because I added another repeat of the pattern that's on the foot. And then I went into the leg pattern. And you can see now, um, it's not very obvious with this yarn, but you can see this is the um, reverse stockinette field that's in the pattern and that's where I'm going to sew the roses onto. And in the pattern you have two of those fields on top of each other, but I decided to only do one and that's why I did another repeat of the pattern down here so that the rows would be a little higher. And then once I finish this um, reverse stockinette field, I'm going to go into the, um, the ribbing and um, yeah, then I'll have to do the second sock and I will have to embroider the roses and then I will have another green pair of socks that I'm going to donate to this um, to the organization who um, work with women who have ovarian cancer and they give these people um, green socks um, plus information and help to get them through the difficult time they're facing. So that's the sweet rose number two sock and then I continued knitting on the blue stockings that's the Elizabeth Montague pattern by by Kate Davies I received two more patterns from her from the ebook that I bought and um, I think I already said the second pattern is really nice the third pattern is a, it's just a vanilla sock so um, she wanted to include that in her ebook and it's also um, a pattern that you can either knit as a normal sock or as a knee-high sock or stocking and that'd be perfect to do with um, some of the very colorful opal yarn uh, I can I can I, I'm sure I'm going to try out that vanilla sock recipe just to see what it's like but for now I'm knitting the Elizabeth Montague socks that I've called blue stockings and I have finished the increases and I finished turning the heel so the foot of the sock is done or both the socks is done so you can see now this is these are the increases that I did and then you turn the heel like this it's sort of like a looks like a triangle but they really fit very nicely so the way the pattern is written you have to start the increases when the sock is 24 rows shorter than your foot for this size and because you can you can measure the 24 rows on your own knitting um, that ensures that the fit is going to be exactly the way you want it so I'm really happy with that and now on the leg um, I will continue knitting stockinette in the back and the pattern in the front and then I will knit until I hit the point where my calf grows a bit, <laughs> gets a bit wider, and then there, there are some increases in the back of the leg. That'll be a little pattern again, and then I think I do some decreases again, and then you do the ribbing. So um, there's still a bit of work to do, even though both the feet are done. Um, yeah, and but for now I can I can just knit a bit without having to look at the pattern because I already know this pattern by heart. It's not difficult to do, but I think it's really beautiful, very effective. And um, yeah, and then I shall be looking forward to doing the calf increases. These are these socks. And then the third pair of socks that's on my needle needles at the moment is the round six sock madness socks called Madeline or Madeline no idea and it's these beautiful socks um, with this all over leaf pattern where you can't see the beginning of the round and the pattern is going to flow into the um, heel and into the toe so I think last week I just hit the spot where the afterthought heel is going to be put into the pattern says to 
I think to put the stitches on, on a holder and then cast on new stitches, provisionally cast on new stitches, but somebody asked and you can also just knit a different color. And then I'm going to unpick the red yarn and catch the stitches um, below and above this line. And then that's the stitches that I'm going to use to knit the heel. And right now I'm knitting the foot and I still have quite a few rounds to do, even for the smallest size. And once I've reached that point, I will sort of look at it and, and decide whether that's long enough or I want to do the middle size. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do the biggest size. So it's either going to be small or middle, but I'll decide that when I get there. I still think the pattern is really lovely. I like the two colors together. This is what the floats look like. I try to catch them or I do catch them after three or four stitches or five at the most. And I think that's okay for putting the sock on and taking it off. And it, it makes for a really warm and nice and still a bit stretchy. So I know that people have um, use or put, do the floats differently. Some people have shorter floats and then they use a bigger needle. I tend to use a smaller needle because I usually leave the floats a bit loosely and then my whole knitting gets more loosely and um, so I use a smaller needle but I don't think the floats are too long and I'm quite happy for it to be a bit stretchy so you can put it on and it won't be too wide because it sort of goes back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah so these are the Madeline socks. Now the round seven of the sock madness has started so I got the um, the next pattern and that's a fantastic pattern it's a sideways sock um, with a slip stitch pattern it looks very beautiful I will definitely knit it but I will probably start the pattern when I finished one of these pairs I may start earlier oh let's say I'll try and finish something and then start these socks because I'm not in the competition I have to I don't have to start them right now but I will definitely want to knit them and I will probably try and knit them in my size. Might be difficult, but I will try. And um, yeah, it's a two color slip stitch pattern. It's, as I said, very beautiful and I'll show it to you as soon as I start the socks. And the first person has already finished their sock. I think the pattern arrived yesterday afternoon and the first person's already finished them. It's crazy. And I know they are going to wait for number two and three. And when three people have finished their socks, then as far as I know, the sock madness is over. Um, yeah, so, but, but I'm looking forward to looking at all the pictures in the group, in the sock madness group. You can have a look at these pictures, even if you're not a member of the group. Uh, and it's fantastic to see all the um, different socks and patterns that people have knit during those last couple of weeks or months. And uh, people are starting to show pictures with all the socks that they've knit during the sock madness. I will do that at some point, but I will try and finish a few more socks. Um, and then I'll do a big picture with, with all the socks in the picture. Yeah, so much for socks. On to other projects. The next thing I'm showing you is the shawl I'm knitting, the Town Square Shawl by Romy. I'm using this Opal subscription yarn and um, it's part of the pattern battle that we do for every um, parcel of the subscription and I am knitting the main triangle at the moment. This is going to be the top of the shawl and I am doing short rows so the rows are getting shorter and I will have to knit this until I get to the tip of the triangle but then I will use all the stitches that I have and add a border. And this is what I have so far. It's not too much more than what I showed you last week, but the rows are still rather long. It takes quite some time to do them. And I stopped in the middle of a row uh, intentionally because last week I noticed that if I knit to the end of the row, because I'm doing short rows, I'm not really at the end. Um, so these are the stitches that I am not knitting at the moment. So this is like the, the border. And these are quite loose. 
So when the, when I'm here with the needle in between the part I'm knitting and the stitches I'm not knitting, these tend to fall off the needle. Um, so I decided to stop in the middle of the row um, so things are a bit more secure. Secure, yeah. So that's that's going to be the top of the triangle, and that's one of the sides, and this is the other side, uh, <laughs> like this. And again, you can see this this pattern running on the edge, and then it goes into those diamonds, which form the main pattern. Yep, still enjoy the knitting of that, and I have two balls of this of this yarn in this color and I hope it's going to be enough um, if not I will maybe add a different color on the very edge but I might also put an accent color in between this triangle and the next edge pattern so when I when I knit these stitches I've been I was thinking of um, oh I've got the color here it's, it's this um, neon green that I use for the um, for the sock madness socks and I think it looks quite nice with this color because it this is the same green or almost the same green in the yarn and I was thinking of maybe doing just a, a, a small accent bit in between oops sorry in between those two patterns so I might do that I'll decide that when the triangle is done which is still going to take some time now on to the clothing things that I'm making. I did not put a lot of work into the glacier pullover. This is a fairly big project already and it's <laughs> supposed to grow quite a bit more. And now with the warm weather I wasn't too motivated to knit on this a lot. So I think all I did was add one more stripe like this. Um, yeah, but I still like it. I still haven't sat down to measure what the overall length might be and how much I can knit of each color. So um, yeah, maybe I'll get to it this week. Maybe not. We'll see. But I'm as long as I keep knitting, I don't worry about it. It's when I put things to the side that I'm sometimes worried uh, because I don't know when I'm going to pick them up again. But this is still in the rotation, so that's fine. Um, the next pattern is the kids pullover I'm knitting. Oh, by the way, the glacier pullover is a pattern by Jorge Locatelli. And as is this kids pullover, that's the pattern heart string. And I am knitting those two colors. By Opal 3-ply. This is their 3-ply yarn that they used to produce and not making it at the moment and I'm mixing those two colors and I finished the first sleeve last week and this is all the work I put into the second so it's not a lot I think last week I've already done the ribbing so I only added a few rows but um, yeah I think my sister is almost finished with both her sleeves so I will have to see that I get a move on so that we maybe finish the pullovers about at the same time. And as I'm knitting the bigger pullover, I have a bit more work to put into it. Yeah, but as I said, not a big change, but I'm still working on it. Now, the next pattern. I, this is one of the things that I was, um, that was, had a priority last week. So that's a part of the reason I didn't get so much done on the other things. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is this. And you might be surprised or wondering what this is, but these are 18 of those white horns that I crocheted. <laughs> so as you can see, all 18 are still here, so they're not attached to the blanket yet. And for anybody who's new, I'm crocheting this blanket with um, 18, 12, I think it's 12, we'll have a look at in a minute, um, of these Triceratops heads. And each head is supposed to have three of those horns, which is why it's a triceratops. And um, as you will see in a minute, not all of the dinosaurs have them yet. Now, I have attached all the pieces and I'm really happy about that. I will try and show you the blanket the way it looks now. So it's three dinosaurs wide 
these are the triangles I crocheted, these are the squares, and then on the side there are more triangles, and then it's these three dinosaurs, and these three, and these three, and these three. So it's 12, 12 dinosaurs. And as you can see, this one has its horns, those two don't, and another two without, another one with horns. <laughs> there are two with and one without. And so I will have to sit down and sew them on. The sewing usually takes me longer than crocheting the horns, but um, at some point I will do that. And the other thing I want to do is I want to do an edging around the blanket um, just to give it a more finished look. Um, and I, I have kind of decided what colors to use, but I'm not too sure yet on the pattern that I want to do. So I'm still thinking about that and um, yeah, but I'm almost finished with this blanket. I'm really, really happy because I've um, spent quite a long time working on this blanket and I'll be really happy to see it finished. Now on to the knit alongs. I am running two knit alongs with my YouTube channel and on my Ravel in my Ravelry group. Um, you can find the Ravelry group um, if you look for Kiko's Strickschule and um, the first or it's basically the second knit along but the shorter knit along that we're doing at the moment is for dishcloths and um, the other one is for the blanket but I'll start with the dishcloths today. Last week I showed you the, um, the beginning of this triangle and again I forgot to look I think it's flip it something dishcloth. Um, it's linked in the pattern. If you look, I've, I have link all the all my Ravelry project pages underneath the video. So if you click on that, you can I've um, or written down the pattern on the project page so you can find it. So I decided this is the size that I want for half a dishcloth, um, and then I put put them on a spare needle. This is one side, and this is what the other side looks like. And then I started the second tri triangle in a different color. So this is the front of the dishcloth, this is the back. And the idea behind this pattern is that once you've finished two of those triangles, you hold them together in such a way that one half shows the front and the other half shows the back. And then you sew them together, you can do a three needle bind off or you can use the Kitchener stitch and then you can sew them together and then no matter how you turn your dishcloth you will always have one half that shows the front and one half that shows the back. I really like the idea. Um, I might knit those two pieces together but then again I might knit another two triangles and then decide which colors I want to sew together. Maybe I'll sew this together and start another two anyway. Not decided there yet but I think it's a fun pattern and I'm looking forward to having another dishcloth. So that's that. And then the optic blanket, my last project. I was working on one of those nine square squares <laughs> that I told you about when I showed you the pillow cover and the last nine square thingy um, I had planned on using all the blue colors that I have um, to form the square and then I needed one more color and I had um, one DK weight sock yarn at home that's quite dark so I could have used it for the blanket but the contrast to the black wouldn't have been a very visible or wouldn't have been a big contrast so and then I realized that the color I was using for the pillow is blue and it's one that I haven't used yet for the blanket so this is what I did and I knit one square I think it's quite interesting. So it's the same contrast color in those squares and this is with the black and this is with the white and I think it's quite interesting to see how different it looks even though it's the same yarn. And this was the number nine square for this square and as you can see every square has some blue in it. There's only a little blue in this one like here. Most of it is green and yellow but still they all have a bit of blue 
And I thought every time I finish one of those squares, I'll show you the others just in case you haven't seen them before. <laughs> so this was square number two and this was square number one. So now I have half the blanket finished as I want to do six of those squares um, that I'm going to sew together at some point. Um, yeah, and the next nine square square that I am going to do will have uh, single color contrast colors. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah, so that was everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.